Hello and welcome to this month's Mission Momentum at St. Joseph's College. Mission Momentum is a monthly opportunity for conversation and reflection about our Catholic mercy and liberal arts identities. And this month, we're particularly pleased to welcome parishioners from throughout the Diocese of Portland who are joining us for this conversation with Bishop Robert Dealey about the importance of Pope Francis's recent visit to Iraq. Bishop Dealey was installed as the Bishop of Portland, Maine in February of 2014, and he is himself a native of New England. Before we begin the conversation with Bishop Dealey, we're going to watch this short video, which captures the meaning of the Pope's visit to Iraq in pictures. I think, first of all, uh, there is the visit to Ur, that uh, the uh, large stone uh, monument there is, I think, the backdrop to what where they did the prayer service, the ecumenical prayer service uh, uh, in Ur, which, of course, is the birthplace of uh, Abraham. Uh, and there is the, uh, the Holy Father was trying to make the, the, uh, the tie-in between the uh, the three religions of Abraham, the, the uh, uh, Christianity, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and, and uh, uh, the Muslim faith. Um, so that was an important, uh, that was a very, very important moment to, to, which very much fits into the Holy Father's program, which is to emphasize sameness, emphasize uh, what people have in common so that they can walk together uh, in resolving problems. That's a, a theme which is constant in uh, his writing. It's, uh, I was writing something this morning uh, about uh, Laudato Si. It's in there. It's in his newest book, Let Us Dream, A Path to a Better Future, Pope Francis. Uh, he suggests it as a, as a way to to um, move discussions along which are intractable and which are, are difficult. Uh, so I think that visit to Ur as the center of this trip uh, where he brought everyone together uh, in one gathering uh, uh, was, was a, is, a, is a view into what he was trying to accomplish with this visit. Any of the Holy Father's visits, as we know from ourselves here in the United States, any of the Holy Father's visits are special to uh, the, the, uh, the, the Christian people, the Catholic people of that country. And of course, uh, that was very much the case here, um, particularly his visit to the ruined church, which you saw, uh, uh, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, uh, uh, which, you, which you saw in that video as well. Um, this was a real shot in the arm for people who are um, who have had a very very difficult time, and that is the Christian population of uh, of Iraq. They were destroyed in the uh, uh, m much of their their, uh, their worship spaces were destroyed uh, <clears throat> in the the recent uh, uh, uprisings and um, uh, and 
they were practically uh, eliminated uh, from the country. The numbers of uh, Iraqis have uh, considerably, uh, who are Christians, have considerably uh, gone down over the last couple of years. Um, and um, I, I read something in um, in one of those Vatican websites from the uh, uh, one of the aid agencies from the Holy See, uh, which said that this visit might even have people who have left and gone to the United States or to other places thinking about returning because what by the Holy Father's visiting of the ruins and his encouragement to the people, he has encouraged them to consider the possibility that there can be a life there. And that of course would be a wonderful thing because the Christians uh, in these different uh, Arab cultures uh, have been an important part of the um, mixture of, of those countries uh, for quite some time. I mean, the, the Christian populations of, uh, of, the, of, of Iraq uh, date from New Testament times in, 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 in essence. Uh, they, there has always been a, a Christian presence there. Uh, so to encourage people to continue that uh, in the place in which faith was born with Abraham, uh, the, then would be a good thing. Um, but I think the, the, the lens through which I like to look at this is, the, is, the, uh, is what the Holy Father thinks he is about himself. He went to Iraq, though it would have been a dangerous place under any conditions, because security is not guaranteed. They do the best they can, and they are struggling to put themselves together in, into a, a nation. Um, but it is a struggle, and there are divisions. And in division, in all of that, violence does happen. And so the Holy Father uh, put himself into danger by going. And then, of course, you add to that the fact that we're in the midst of a pandemic, and uh, and somewhat uncontrolled in some parts of the world. And therefore, uh, though he had he has been uh, received the shots and all the rest of that, it's still, I mean, he's still a man who, of age and fragile of fragile health um, for many, many years. Uh, so he, 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 he took a real chance in going, but he insists on doing that because that is his way of uh, building people up and strengthening them uh, in their convictions. Um, and I use the word uh, convictions because he is talking not only to religious people and strengthening their faith, but he's also talking to political leaders and strengthening uh, their resolve to bring peace to, to, the, to, the, to the country, which, is, which may grow out of faith, but is truly a conviction about what is best for the common good. Um, and that's the part of the message that he wants to get up out there. So, uh, and in the midst of that, uh, he um, assures people, this is, he's showing in his own life exactly what he thinks the, uh, the dialogue should be. So he talks about in this newest book of his, uh, Let Us Dream, he says, rather than seeking confrontation, declaring war with each other, with each side hoping to defeat the other, we need processes that allow differences to be expressed, heard, and left to mature in such a way that we can walk together without needing to destroy anyone. This is hard work. It needs patience and commitment above all to each other. Lasting peace is about creating and maintaining processes of mutual listening. We build a people, not with the weapons of war, but in the productive tension of walking together. What did he do on this visit? But exactly that. Yes, he walked with the Christian people. He walked in with them and gave them hope and gave them a, a conviction that something good could come out of uh, the, the evil that they had been visited upon them and the terrible violence that they had suffered through and the trauma of all of that. He also, however, uh, did some other things which I think are equally important. 
he visited the um, um, the uh, Grand Ayatollah uh, of the Shia uh, uh, Muslims, Shia Islam, who are of course, who is of course, uh, which is the smaller group of of uh, Islam, but uh, the Grand Ayatollah Ali Al Sistani, the Holy Father went to his house and visited with him in his own home. And for what purpose? Exactly this purpose, which I've just spoken of, to walk with him and to thank him for walking with the Christian people. Because Al-Sistani was one of the uh, leaders uh, who encouraged the military in Iraq to do something in care for the Christian people who were being attacked. And so the Holy Father wanted to make sure that he showed him due respect and that he went to visit him so that he could thank him for what he had done. Now, you have the Holy Father, the, uh, the, the, the head of the church in the West, uh, the Christian church in the West, going to visit uh, a man who already is a minority, because Shia is a minority in Islam, and uh, not asking him to come meet him, but going to his own home and meeting him for the purpose of thanking him and making it was a there was no conversation publicly between the two of them. The Holy Father went, went into it was greeted at the door by the uh, Ayatollah's son, and visited in his uh, in the internal in the palace, and then a, a statement was made the next day by the Holy See about what had happened in the meeting, and basically they tell us that he was thanked uh, for his uh, care for the Christian communities. <clears throat> but incredible, uh, an incredible way of showing in his own life his wish to walk together with others, even those he doesn't necessarily agree with. Uh, and uh, he continued to, to, uh, to, uh, to do that throughout this trip. So I think that um, it's clear to me that it's, it was important uh, for the Iraqi people in general that the Holy Father saw, it, saw them as important enough for him to visit. Uh, you, you'll notice that um, he, is, he did make the trip to the United States and visited Washington and New York and Philadelphia and so on. But there were particular reasons for that trip. Most of the Holy, most of Pope Francis's trips are to kind of forgotten places in the world, places uh, that uh, lots of other people aren't going to. And uh, so he, uh, uh, he wants to bring himself to assure people of the church's concern for them and of his solidarity with them and of his walking together with them in their attempts to, to resolve their difficulties and their problems. And he's also, by doing that, he's bringing attention of the rest of the world to the difficulties that are there. You can't have a better visual than the Holy Father walking through a ruined cathedral, uh, and which is ruined by the, the, the violence that was visited upon it only recently. Um, and uh, uh, that's a way of, of helping us to share in the suffering of the people who consider that cathedral their holy place. Uh, so it gives us a, a chance as, as, as people to see in a way that we would not see normally uh, what's happening. So the Holy Father's visit, of course, raises that up and makes that possible. He gives the uh, Christian people hope uh, because he has paid attention to them. And he gives the, uh, the uh, Iraqi people a promise that uh, they can uh, work through their difficulties as he shows respect for the people he sees. So those are some preliminary thoughts uh, uh, that, I, that I would have. Um, and uh, so I, uh, um, you know, we can look at some of the questions and so on. Yeah. Great, thank you, Bishop. So does anyone, before, I have some questions and comments, but I'd, ra I'd rather open up to those who joined us first. And I wanna say also welcome to those of you uh, from throughout the diocese who are joining us for this conversation uh, as well. 
Thank you for joining us. Does anyone have their own questions first for the bishop, for Bishop Dealey? <laughs> so excited to have the bishop with us today. And uh, Bishop, just to ask you if there are still hostilities against Christians, against Christianity in Iraq, because we know that uh, at the beginning and when there was war, Christians suffered a lot. So does that still continue? It, 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 Father Gabriel, I, I, I uh, would imagine that since it has been a part of the fabric of those countries for quite some time, uh, that there is still. But the, the kind of uh, uh, hostility which uh, uh, resulted in the destruction of the cathedral uh, with the forces of ISIS, I think, is, is, is uh, lessened with the, with the destruction of ISIS. But I think it's important that to know that the, the, uh, the Ayatollah al-Sistani, who is the uh, principal Shia leader throughout the world, uh, called on the soldiers to protect Christian icons and Christian possessions when they were in churches, keeping them from being destroyed. Now, I think that that's important uh, as an insight into the possibility of uh, what the Holy Father is doing, which is to, to trying to walk with people. We're not going to overcome, I mean, one visit is not going to overcome centuries of uh, distrust. But I, I think that the, what I think needs to happen in, the, in, in for us, I mean, you have more experience with this because uh, you, Islam is, 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 is a, uh, um, a part of the uh, life of Africa in a way that uh, we still is, is still happening here and growing in the United States. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the, 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 the very fact that the Holy Father has made it a point to visit these nations, which are predominantly Muslim and adherents of Islam and has, has, uh, quoted the different Islamic <laughs> leaders and so on in some of his writings and, and so on, I think uh, gives us an appreciation for uh, Islam and a possibility of, of, of better walking together in resolving differences and difficulties that are there. Sister Allen. <clears throat> Bishop, thank you very much for spending this time with us. Um, I couldn't help but think that the fact that Pope Francis chose the name Francis um, he's a man of peace, but what you shared about his book from his book, it's, it's so timely because it's not just over there. We are at conflict here in the United States. And if we could develop those processes that he talks about and let people listen to each other and learn from each other, and it would just be so helpful for us to get along better. And I just feel that Pope Francis is the teacher that he should be. And um, I appreciate what, you, what you've said. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Allen. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I think it's, um, it's important that, to point out that uh, he, in this particular passage that I quoted from, is talking about political processes. He's grounding it in, in convictions about the value of each human person, but he, uh, he's, he, he's, uh, he's really talking about political processes and, and goes on to talk about agreements and how we make agreements and uh, mediation and all of these kinds of things that make a political process grow and talks about how some of that has worked in the uh, EU nations in their own resolution uh, of problems connected to coronavirus and how their response will be made. So I do think that there is something to be said for that. Mm -hmm. And you know, what you do, what you raise for me is, a, is another thing that I'd like to um, share. Um, I think one of, the, one of the central parts of this trip, I talked about its impact on, on uh, Christianity and on, on, uh, on Islam, but one of the principal parts of his trip and one of the reasons for going was that visit to Ur, uh, which is the, um, the, pl the place, the, the uh, the birthplace of uh, Abraham and the place from which Abraham went out to do uh, 
the, the Lord's will. Now, a few weeks ago, I um, I had read this when he was there in in uh, uh, his, his his address that he gave that day. I watched it on television, and was it, it was very moving uh, to see him driving through the desert, and there's just this mound of stone, which is the monument of Ur, which is what's left of Ur, and that's the place from which uh, uh, Abraham went out. And of course, from Abraham uh, comes uh, the, the uh, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Um, and uh, he has this wonderful way of expressing it. He said, God asked Abraham to raise his eyes to heaven and to count its stars. And today we Jews, Christians, and Muslims, together with our brothers and sisters of other religions, honor our father Abraham by doing as he did. We look up to heaven and we journey on earth. <clears throat> and both of those factors are, he sees as central. We look up to heaven and we journey on earth. So when he speaks about looking up to heaven, <laughs> He reminds us that the otherness of God points us toward others, towards our brothers and sisters. If we want to preserve fraternity, we must not lose sight of heaven. If we exclude God, we end up worshiping the things of this earth. So in this secular culture that we live in, I can well understand, if you follow that line of reasoning, how we can get to the positions that we're in, because we are, we've, we've taken on our enlightenment philosophy of individuality and of, uh, of taking care of me, and uh, how is this going to uh, affect me? Look at the kinds of discussions we had about the coronavirus vaccines. There were a few and far people who you heard actually say, well, I'm going to wait until it, it comes to us. You know, uh, there, was, there, were, there was a lot of public upheaval about who gets to go first and all the rest of this, um, which is that kind of situation. We're, we're not all going to be protected until we're all protected. There has to be that understanding that, and faith is what pushes us out to each other. Because when there is a God, I'm not God. And that's basically what the Holy Father is saying. And uh, so the loss of, of, the, the, of faith in our culture is causing part of the, uh, the difficulty with communication. We have to help people to come to an experience of God in their lives by the, the lives of the, um, uh, that we live. So he makes the point that we look up to heaven and we journey on earth. Yes, we look up to heaven, we acknowledge that there is a God and that that God calls us to uh, work with each other, to be in contact with each other, to be in relationship with each other. And we uh, journey on earth uh, because we come to uh, realize that we need one another. Uh, the pandemic has made us realize that no one is saved alone. And from that, he quotes from Fratelli Tutti, uh, his latest encyclical. The temptation to withdraw from others is never ending. Yet at the same time, we know that the notion of every man from himself will rapidly degenerate into a free-for-all that would prove worse than any pandemic. I think that's very true. So I think that I, I, I love this talk. I think it's one of the... Uh, one of the uh, special things that he he did uh, uh, during that trip. I think one of the, the things that we need to do in our own culture uh, is to is to, uh, to 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 look at each other as human beings uh, before we start to categorize ourselves into um, Irish Catholic and uh, uh, French Canadian and uh, and various and sundry other other groups and and uh, situations. Thank you. Any other questions? You can also post in the chat thing. Uh, Carmina, yes. Hi, thank you, Bishop, for your for your words. 
uh, I, I'm just really encouraged by them. I was wondering if you could speak a little, um, so much, so much horror has happened to the Christians in Iraq and there's going to be a huge need for them and us too, as, as brothers and sisters to them, uh, to forgive them, to forgive people who've hurt them. If there's going to be peace and if we're going to walk with them together, I imagine it'd be very hard for a Christian who's been persecuted so much to, uh, to do that. And the need to forgive, the ability to forgive the one who's hurt us is going to be really dire. So I was wondering if you could speak to that a little and what Pope Francis um, has said about it or would say. I, I believe he actually, I just, he talked about that when he was with the, uh, with the bishops and with the um, um, priests and religious uh, in the cathedral. Um, and I thought I had organized all these things quite nicely so I'd be able to refer to them. It's great. He, 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 um, he says uh, at times, this is as close as I can get at the moment, at times misunderstandings can arise and we can experience tensions. These are the knots that hinder the weaving of fraternity. They are knots that we carry within ourselves. After all, we are all sinners. Yet these knots can be untied by grace, by a greater love. They can be loosened by the medicine of forgiveness and by fraternal dialogue, by patiently bearing one another's burdens and strengthening each other in moments of trial and difficulty. <clears throat> I think you are uh, correct that, uh, that uh, forgiveness is uh, is uh, is an important part of, of all of that, uh, and um, so uh, I, uh, I I I agree. And I, but I you know that I I always think that we can say that fairly easily, and we have been involved uh, in different crises in the church in my lifetime, uh, and. Uh, you know, we sometimes suggest that um, we should come to a way w which we can forgive each other and so on. I, I think it's a, a process uh, which is not always easily taken. Um, and, uh, and it has to be given the time to, uh, to be nurtured. Uh, there has to be trust which underlies it. And, uh, uh, and I, I'm, I mean, the, the fragility of um, uh, Iraq and Iran and, and uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, all these uh, Arab countries is, is, is very great. They're, they're very, very fragile. Uh, even in those places in which the government is very strong, um, it's generally because there's a great deal of, uh, of uh, uh, government uh, pressure to keep things together. And so it, it appears to be harmonious, but the fact of the matter is that it, it, it's really just a dictatorship which is imposing on people. Uh, there has to be some freedom to allow people to, to accept forgiveness. And so I think it comes later in the in a process, uh, uh, which, I mean, I, I think that um, Archbishop Tutu was, was brilliant in South Africa and waiting a number of years before the, that Reconciliation Commission came out. We, in this country, tend to think that, oh, that was a good idea. Why don't we do that? Or why, does, why don't they do that? Um, it, it, it's it's a, a, the process of really uh, letting forgiveness change people is something which requires that hearts be changed first in ourselves so that we can do that uh, externally. Forgiveness is not, it's not a programmed reality, unfortunately. Right. It seems I like how, just I like how uh, Pope Francis mentioned knots because he's got the huge devotion to Mary, undoer of knots or untire yeah. of knots, and I, I think this is all it just all goes together. It comes up a lot in different different ways. Yeah, it really does. Thank you, Bishop. You're welcome. It, it seems to me, Bishop, also that I think you've identified something, and and it, it, that also you described in Francis, which is. This, uh, the path towards reconciliation perhaps begins with our willingness to journey with each other. Um, 
you know, I, it seems the way you described uh, one of the things I've read about Francis's intent for Pope, the Pope's intent for this journey too, was not just to speak to the Christian communities in Iraq, but to speak for the Christian communities in Iraq to the world. And in that, it seems to me, he illustrates our principle of solidarity, right? That he begins with them, with where they're at on their behalf. Uh, and perhaps this, this path of forgiveness begins with our willingness to be with others and to journey with others as the Pope kind of has modeled for us. I, I, I would agree, Chris, except I think it starts a little bit back before our, ourselves. Uh, I think that, that the, first, the, the first conviction is to look to the stars mm. and who created the stars. It's, to, it's, it's first, faith is the first, con, first step. Um, it's not just ourselves. It's, it's the fact that we acknowledge that we are creatures, that we acknowledge that there is a God who has brought us into being. And if we can acknowledge that, then and we know our own weakness, and we can acknowledge our own weakness, then we will have an openness. Our hearts will be open to the possibility that we also sin, that we make mistakes, that we disappoint God, uh, that we don't do what we're supposed to do, and all the rest of that, which opens the way for us to be able to receive forgiveness ourselves and therefore to uh, facilitate it for others. But I think the, the um, this is not just, I don't think about, uh, I think there's a, a step before our, ourselves. I think there's, um, uh, he says <coughs> in that uh, talk that he, he gives at Ur, uh, we serve God in order to be set free from enslavement to our egos because God urges us to love. So there has to, it's, it's God who helps us to understand that we should love. Uh, and without faith, therefore we don't have that connection. This is true religiosity, to worship God and to love our neighbor. Um, and, uh, uh, but he gets his point in. He says, in today's world, which often forgets or presents distorted images of the Most High, Believers are called to bear witness to his goodness, to show his paternity through our fraternity. So it's a wonderful image um, and something that that um, helps us to figure out how we get to the place where we can uh, uh, where we can truly build the kind of forgiveness that uh, Carmine is talking about. Thank you. Very important point. Absolutely. Preceding us. Absolutely. Um, any other questions? Any questions from our guests? You know, the, the community that he was, the Christian community in Iraq, um, when I read a little bit more about it, um, I found interesting, Bishop, and that is we, our general understanding of Christianity tends to be in the West, Protestant Catholic, globally, you know, Western Christianity, Eastern Christianity. But the Christians of Iraq, most the majority, as I understand it, are Chaldean Christians, which are Eastern Rite Christians, which are Christians in the East, but they're in union with the with the Roman Church. Correct? Can, can you speak a little bit to that about kind of our Eastern brothers and sisters, uh, our brothers and sisters in the Eastern Rite churches? <laughs> yes, uh, but I'm not sure that the Chaldeans uh, Chaldeans draw their. Uh... They're, they're from Egypt. They are very early, uh, very early in in adopting Christianity and in in, in their own reality. Um, I, I expect that there are some of them who are in uh, union with Rome, but uh, uh, for the most part, I think they are uh, affiliated with uh, uh, Istanbul, with Constantinople, mm -hmm. uh, and the East. Um, but there, the I mean the, the 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 existence of Eastern churches in 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 the church or Eastern rites in the church, um, it's a wonderful thing. We have we we forget that that there are these other. Uh, they're much smaller than the 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 the, uh, the Roman uh, church, the Latin church, which is uh, the Western world. Um, but they are uh, an important uh, influence uh, in uh, in uh, in the East um, in Lebanon. I was reading uh, this morning, 34% of the people in Lebanon are Christian, most of them Melkites and Maronites, which we would have familiarity with. Um, 
we have the Melkite Diocese of Newton in Massachusetts, uh, which has parishes here in the United States. And then also we have a Maronite parish here in, uh, um, uh, in, uh, um, in Waterville, uh, here in Maine. Uh, so th those are, uh, those are Eastern churches, which have their own worship, uh, their own, uh, their own leadership, their own, uh, uh, uh patriarch and, uh, um, uh, they, 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 they come from, uh, they're particularly from Lebanon and from that area. Uh, and uh, so the, the different, there, there's a, a need for uh, uh, working among all those people. I think the, um, the place where you get to see that in its most stark form is to visit the uh, shrine of the, uh, Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, um, because you have um, the uh, the Greeks and the Romans have access to the uh, empty tomb, and um, they each have separate chapels uh, on the other side. Uh, the Latins have the uh, the chapel of uh, uh, the place where Mary Magdalene. Uh, met Jesus uh, as he uh, on the morning of Easter, and the, uh, the the Greeks are on the other side in another chapel, uh, and uh, and they share these spaces. And then around our smaller shrines, which belong to all of these different uh, different um, Christian uh, uh, rites, uh, such as the the Chaldeans and the uh, Armenians and the uh, uh, the Melkites and the Maronites and all these different different things, uh, situations <clears throat> in terms of organizing, which we worked out over centuries uh, in terms of um, who can use what, when, uh, which part of the basilica. <clears throat> so when we talk about conflicts with the, um, uh, with Christians and, and uh, uh, Muslims, I think we need to realize that there are conflicts between uh, Christians as well um, among themselves. It's not just uh, uh, other parts uh, of the world. All the more reason why there was the the the, the, the visit was so powerful because uh, the Chaldeans that he visited, some of them are probably not really uh, do not really see him. Or they see him as the patriarch of the West, not necessarily as their patriarch. So I mean, some of the some of the, uh, the some of the uh, churches uh, do, uh, but not all of them. Um, but uh, I think it's instructive. My my uh, my brother uh, is a priest uh, and uh, was a chaplain for uh, in the navy for a number of years. And among the places that he uh, was stationed was in Iraq during um, the war in Iraq. Uh, and uh, he talked to, to me. He, he talked to me about his visit with his barber. He went for a haircut, and the, the barber, uh, his family, the, the barber told him he was a Christian, and his family was in Detroit. He was still working in uh, outside of uh, Baghdad, someplace, uh, and. Uh, uh, but he eventually uh, hoped to be able to go himself to Detroit. Uh, I've always remembered that story because it speaks to the humanity of all of us, uh, no matter what our differences, family and uh, wanting to care for each other uh, are kind of in our uh, DNA. And uh, it shows itself in, in, in regular ways when you, really have a chance to talk to someone you, you and you learn something about them, you realize that there's, uh, there's a lot of commonality in, in our human nature. To the, a visit to the, to, the, to the Holy Land is for most people, the place in which we can, we can uh, uh, see this close up, you know, the, 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 the way in which the world outside of our own world exists and lives and, and intertwines. And, you know, there you have a Jewish population, an Arab population, and a Christian population, which traditionally has run the shops and, you know, kind of been the oil between the two uh, conflicting sides and uh, uh, is, uh, 
and that's the way the, the Middle East has, has operated for some centuries. I'd like to ask you about the, it seems to me that with this visit also that Francis is also modeling a, a pattern both of his namesake, uh, St. Francis, who visited, the you know, tradition tells us visited the Sultan to have a dialogue with him, uh, but also his predecessors. Pope John Paul II was the first Pope to visit the great synagogue of Rome. Uh, Pope Benedict visited Turkey uh, and, 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 and interacted, engaged with both um, Eastern Christians, but also Muslims as well. So could you speak a little bit to um, Francis and both his predecessors as far as the, the kind of work of the church engaging with, you know, other traditions, other religions? Mm -hmm. I, well, I think, you know, we can never forget the visit of uh, Pope Benedict to the, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, in in uh, Istanbul to the uh, to the uh, uh, the great uh, great uh, uh, Hagia Sophia, which has now been turned into a, a mosque again, but the uh, uh, but at the time was 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 a, a museum, um, uh, which was another uh, beautiful visit. I, I think a couple of things, uh, Chris, on that. I, I I think first of all, it it shows you that. Uh, religion still has a place in the world, and because the 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 uh, these visits uh, that the Holy Father makes uh, and has made since Paul VI went to Manila and to the United Nations, um, those visits are important. They they speak to people uh, and they call something out of people, um, which regular uh, leaders of state do not necessarily do. So it's, it speaks to the importance of, of uh, the recognition of religion in, in, in our uh, society. And as it, it, it always brings attention to things which may not have been uh, watched carefully by others uh, along the way. So I think that uh, in those two things across the board, um, uh, the, these visits are important. Um, <clears throat> I think they have, they, they reflect the, the wishes of, of each of the, uh, the men involved and, and what the, the goals that they were trying to uh, accomplish by their, by their, by their visits. Um, uh, in, in, uh, you know, in, in going in, in, as I say, Pope Francis, uh, following the example, as you say, of Francis, uh, wanted very much to go to Iraq because it's a it's a it's a nation that needed that healing that he could bring to it, um, and um, uh, oftentimes the meetings are scheduled around other events. So in the United States, it was the um, um, it was the World uh, Meeting of Families in uh, Philadelphia uh, that Pope Francis came for. <clears throat> Those are kinds of meetings that in World Youth Day, which the Pope is always going to go to. But these other meetings, these other visits are to places which need to be lifted up and they need lifting up. Uh, and uh, I think that the uh, many of the visits that he's making and uh, there was the case with Pope Benedict as well, uh, that uh, are doing that they're they're helping people to 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 meet people in different places and uh, and um, because of the role of the pope and all of this um it doesn't become a political event it's a it's a uh, a spiritual event and a and a, uh, and a human event thank you uh i'll open it up here i've got one last bishop but i'll open up to anyone else here who might have a question for the bishop Uh, Bishop, do you know, you said that, you know, one of the things that these visits do for us, for the world, is bring to light situations and conditions that we may not be aware of. Um, to Carmina's earlier point, you know, at, not until I read about the Pope's visit did I know that the Christian community in Iraq had declined by almost 75 percent under the conditions that you, you mentioned. Um, is there any work that the, the U.S. bishops are doing that, um, that people can and join, plug into, that can offer their support as well for these communities 
that are it, it kind of that there that are um, that now we know about and we can offer our support to. In what ways can we, from here in America, perhaps as Christians, offer our support? Oh, I, I I think of two right off the bat that are very important uh, to that. Obviously, always uh, uh, CRS uh, Catholic Relief Services. It goes to places which are in emergency and which are uh, which are are, are, are troubled, um, but the two agencies which which deal with the Middle East in a particular way are um, the uh, Kaniwa, the, the uh, Catholic Near East Welfare Association, which uh, uh, supports and, and strengthens schools, parishes, uh, Catholic institutions, just hospitals, and all kinds of things. Uh, throughout the Middle East and in India, certain parts of India as well, uh, and uh, um, has a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful mission. Um, it's on my list of charities uh, annually. Uh, it's located in New York, um, uh, in the Archdiocese of uh, New York, but it, uh, but it, its outreach is, is, is very much focused on these needs. It has a wonderful publication if you want to learn more about uh, people uh, in these countries where I learned an awful lot was from their magazine, which is called One, uh, the number One, O-N-E, um, and has wonderful stories about the places in which they support missions and what the people are doing in those missions and so on. So that's a very worthwhile uh, organization, um, which uh, it, it, it certainly can can use uh, uh, assistance. Um, the other uh, organization, which is uh, uh, which is dedicated to particularly to the uh, the, the shrines and, and preservation of the uh, of the Christian population in the Holy Land, is the uh, Knights of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, the uh, which uh, does a lot of uh, uh, good work in the in the Holy Land itself. Um, it helps to sponsor a hospital in. Uh, Bethlehem and uh, various parts of the order, which is of course worldwide, <clears throat> also has different parts of the mission. I led a uh, pilgrimage to the Holy Land um, a few years ago for the uh, order, which I'm a member, and we visited a school uh, in um, near Bethlehem, in the town next to Bethlehem, which the New England uh, uh, members of the uh, equestrian order, the lieutenancy, uh, support and uh, made a wonderful day. It was just like my visiting a school here in Maine, except the kids were Arabs <laughs> and the stacks were different. Uh, um, but the kids sang me a song and we, we had a lovely visit. We did all the things we, we do. We walked around in the classroom. We brought some books with us, some school supplies and things of that nature to give to the children. But uh, uh, it, was a, it, was, it was a wonderful thing. Then, of course, as you might be aware, uh, the Knights of Columbus have uh, been very much involved in the rebuilding in Iraq, in in, uh, in Erbil, and uh, uh, the churches and the uh, schools and so on. They've been very uh, uh, strategic in, in providing seed money and trying to help uh, people there. Uh, they're also involved in Syria, uh, in some of the tragic stuff in Syria. So there's a lot going on in the United States, not necessarily coordinated by the, uh, the, the Bishop's Conference, but certainly uh, 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 encouraged by the Bishop's Conference and by the, by the individual bishops uh, to uh, connect with uh, all of these uh, places and that are in such need. Uh, it's uh, the, the, the Christian population of the, the Middle East has, uh, has decidedly uh, gone down. I mean, it's gone down even in Israel, uh, which uh, was a place in which it, it had been a fairly, there had been a fairly decent population. It really is the Franciscans and the, um, and the, the holy places and the employment that, that, that is provided in those places, which makes it possible for a Christian population to uh, continue to exist in, in, uh, in, uh, in the Holy Land. So I think there are some really good things, but it's a good question and I appreciate that. And uh, that's a way to, uh, those are different ways to, to, that I can think of to, to help those people. Good. 
Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for giving us your time. We know you certainly have a very busy schedule and for sharing your uh, perspective with us on uh, the Pope's visit. Um, and we hope to welcome you back sometime in the future, perhaps even physically here on campus so we can hear <laughs> Good. Yes. Thanks, Chris, very much. And thank you all for uh, participating today. It was delightful. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Everybody.